All right, so um, this is the third time that I've tried to record this video. Before I go into what this video is about, I want to talk about my last video. My last video I recorded April and uploaded it the same day, April the 1st. It wasn't an April Fool's video. Basically, what had happened is I had found someone who I uh, perceived to have a disassociative identity disorder or DID and someone had evidence that you know to to claim that this person didn't actually have said disorder and um, and because of that I suffered a panic attack at work and be, because I was sick and tired of people faking mental disorders now, I don't have a mental disorder, but I do have a mental condition called hypersensitivity. Um, it's a personality type, so I got panicked. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm okay now. Uh, didn't do anything to myself. Didn't do anything irrational. I basically just stayed in my room and took a mental health day, listened to songs, did meditation, tried to calm myself down. And uh, I'm still going through some stuff, but I'm starting to manage it better. Um, it, it's starting to leave my system. I'm less panicky, obviously, which is why I'm recording this video. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that is not going to be a regular thing. I'm not going to talk about that stuff because that's none of your business. I just made that video out of a spur of the moment thing because I was disappointed and upset and distraught and panicked and it wasn't good so uh, but I had to get my emotions out there to someone so someone could hear me so with that um, on to what this video is about uh, so I have my cell phone here. Uh, it's uh, I, I'm putting it on my uh, my keyboard, and uh, uh, the uh, title of this video, or the title of the uh, of the idea, is uh, "Make a Vlog, Women I Look Up To." So make a vlog about women that I look up to. Um, I tend to look up to a lot of women in uh, media. Uh, more so than men and the reason for that is because you know I, I, I guess I kind of got tired growing up of the classic Joseph Campbell hero's journey go save the princess story um, I wanted to find new stories and because of that, uh, I found a lot of stories that had more titular female characters or just main female characters. I found them to be more interesting than male characters. With that, go, if this video is over 20 minutes long, I'm going to leave uh, time chapters along the player bar in the, and in the description. So you can skip to whatever part you want. If it's not over 20 minutes, then whatever. Suck it up. Um, so uh, with that, um, no particular order. I might skip a few just to keep this video under, I don't know, under like an hour. If I end up recording for that long, I probably won't record for that long. But um, the first, well, actually the first two are Terry and Bindi Irwin. Uh, I will have uh, um, pictures, screenshots of profiles so uh, so you know what they look like and I will go over who they are. So uh, Terry and Bindi Irwin. Uh, Terry Irwin is the wife of the late Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, and Bindi Irwin is Terry and Steve Irwin's daughter, and they are the leading women in climate change awareness and 
global warming and pollution and animal conservation and they they they, they are the women who are leading the uh, forefront with the whole wildlife warriors and getting people aware of the importance of protecting endangered wildlife and also one thing I think that one of the reasons I was able to relate to Bindi Irwin so much was um, was the same reason I relate to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Democratic representative from New York, uh, which, who isn't on this list, but I'm going to mention her because I don't care. You know, I, I'm not saying if I support her or don't support her. Um, I'm just saying I relate to her. Uh, is because uh, they're pretty much the same age as me, a little bit older, like I think by like two or three years, one year, something like that. So um, I just, I, I really like what they do. I think they do an amazing job continuing Steve Irwin's message. Uh, the next woman is uh, Ashley Eckstein. Um... Ashley Eckstein is the voice of Ahsoka Tano in Star Wars The Clone Wars. And she was the one who basically said, you know, hey, it's okay for women to like geek stuff. It's okay for women to be nerds. You know, geek, you know, geek and pop culture aren't just relegated to men. Because, you know, fun fact, 50% of the Star Wars fan base is women. Uh, Ashley Eckstein took advantage of that by making a clothing brand, a merchandise brand called Her Universe, which is a Star Wars brand geared at women um, and girls. And um, without her, we wouldn't have Rey in the new trilogy um, of Star Wars, the Disney brand of Star Wars. Uh, only difference between uh, Daisy Ridley's portrayal and Ashley Eckstein's portrayal in Star Wars is Ashley Eckstein was able to have creative freedom, unlike Daisy Ridley, uh, to basically do do whatever she wanted with the uh, character emotionally. You know, growing up, she was you know, Ahsoka Tano was like a big sister to me, and Ashley Eckstein was able to. Uh, you know, bring that sense of of wonder to um to the I guess forefront of the character. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be skipping a few uh 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 women on this list because I don't want this video to be super long. So uh, not the next one, but um. Just skipping over a few, um, I have uh, Billie Eilish. Uh, Billie Eilish is widely regarded as the Kurt Cobain of Gen Z. Um, she writes all of her own music just like Kurt Cobain did. She gets the trauma and the hardships and, and, and the angst of Gen Z. Just like Kurt Cobain did with Gen X in the uh, in the grunge movement, one of my uh, my, my favorite song that Billie Eilish uh, has ever made is uh, "Everything I Wanted," a a absolute masterpiece. Also, her and her brother Phineas, who Phineas works with her sister a lot on the music that she makes. Um, they actually produced the uh, soundtrack for Turning Red, which I think is awesome. Uh, the the new Pixar movie, and they wrote like an entire, basically an EP, a fictitious EP for a boy band within that universe, which I think is adorable. You know, and and, and also like every time Billie Eilish has done anything corporate or whatever, it always comes back to art. Um, like she did stuff for uh, Adobe uh, and Adobe software and stuff like that. And you can see her ads on like Twitch 
um, but it's relating to art. You know, she's not over here promoting, like, cooking products or whatever. And she truly respects the passion and the creativity that goes into music and art. And that that's what I really like about her. And so I, I wish her nothing but the best. I think she's a wonderful role model. And I look up to her because... Uh, she just she is the embodiment of all of the questions that Gen Z have to the older generations. Uh, next is Emma Watson. Uh, Emma Watson played Hermione Granger in uh, Harry Potter. Feminist, political activist, still friends with Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grint. Uh, in the books. She actually acknowledged that maybe I should have been in Ravenclaw instead of Gryffindor um, because, you know, I'm a Ravenclaw. So, yeah, I, 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 I really like Hermione Granger's character in Harry Potter. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm sorry about uh, my, my lack of, I guess, vocal inflection. I just woke up from a nap, so... Uh, also recovering from a panic attack, you know, it takes the wind out of yourself. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, um, anyway, um, but no, uh, Emma Watson, she, um, she was basically a role model to me in that she was really good in schooling and, um, and homework and stuff, and she was a character who basically told me to, hey, get your act together, bud, you know, do your schoolwork, you know, it, you know, it, it, it's okay to be a nerd, it's okay to be a geek, you know, this isn't the 1990s anymore, fam, you know, there are people who find that attractive now, which is awesome, but, um, you know, also the fact that she still keeps in contact with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, uh, puppy supremacy, even though, uh, even though I have a cat or my parents have a cat, so that's kind of specious, but whatever, uh, puppy supremacy, Daniel Radcliffe, woo, woo, I tried to woo the first time and my voice went, uh, but she still keeps in contact with all of the cast of Harry Potter, especially Rupert Grint, who played Ron Weasley, and uh, Daniel Radcliffe, who played uh, Harry Potter. The next uh, woman is uh, someone who I found not recently, but a couple months ago. Um, so when Stromae, uh, the, French, the biggest modern French pop star, returned from his like eight to 10 year hiatus from making music to focus on mental health, which I'm so, so glad that he's okay. I, I, tr I truly am. I love Stromae. Um, and also he made a song. I forgot what the song was called, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a song about his mother and the love that he has for his mother. Um, despite people making fun of his mother all through his childhood and even as an adult. Um, and it's a really beautiful song, and I listen to it a lot when I'm working out. But anyway, so, so I, I was trying to get more into the uh, French pop scene, and uh, I found India, or Indila, I should say. I don't Indila, India, whatever. Um, and... Um, I'm going to say Indila, because that's how a lot of people pronounce it, even though I want to say India, but it's not India, it's Indila, 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 what, a, yeah, <laughs> uh, language is weird, uh, I'm from the south, so pa pardon my, my, my particular for, uh, mispronunciation, so, uh, the first song of hers I heard was a uh, Denire Donce, which means One Last Dance. Uh, and then I, uh, my favorite song of hers is Turner Las de Vid, I think is what it's called, which means Turning Into the Void. And 
I basically like her for the same reason I like Stromae. I think she's a wonderful artist and she she's doing a lot to bring French pop to the mainstream. And, you know, everyone likes to talk about K-pop and how wonderful K-pop is and Asian music, which is, you know, I mean, you know, I, you know, I love Jungkook from BTS. I think he's amazing. Um, he did a cover of Harry Styles' uh, Falling, which is wonderful. The stuff coming out of, like, the Oceanic countries, Australia, New Zealand, etc., and Europe... You know, Europe is the birthplace of modern pop music. You know, ABBA. So, um, a lot of people like to sleep on French pop, but it's actually really good. The next woman that I put on this list is Jaden Animations. Uh, Jaden Animations uh, is, if you don't know who she is, which is surprising, she is the most one of the most popular animators and the most popular female animators on uh animator sorry on um a animator um hello mtv welcome, welcome to my to crab. My crab these are my Here friends diving booster um It's painful. Oh, I'm in so much emotional distraught trying to get through this video. Okay, Jess. Uh, keep it together, Jesse. You got this. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Jade Animations is the most popular female animator on a, on a YouTube. And um, she is a, uh, I believe, Japanese-Canadian, I believe. She's Canadian? I don't know. I know she's Japanese descent, but I don't know her national um, residency, whether she's American or Canadian. I'm pretty sure she's Canadian. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I first found about her through The Odd Ones Out, who I don't watch The Odd Ones Out anymore because, you know, Jane Animations makes content that is geared towards children but anyone can watch it whereas odd ones out is like strictly e for everyone g so i, I don't like the odd ones out sorry yeah jane animations um recently made a video going over like uh her experience with a romanticism and asexuality so experiencing no little to no romantic or intimate re uh, attraction to people um, which puts her on the LGBT spectrum as someone who is a uh, bisexual I am um, I'm really happy that we can get more representation with with mainstream like youtubers now of course there are going to be hate comments uh, people being ignorant people being stupid People being stinky and cringe. Uh, going back to the intro of this video about that person who is faking a disassociative identity disorder. Um, there's no concrete evidence that they were faking DID, but they haven't come out publicly with like any records, any psychiatric like diagnosis of disassociative identity disorder. And you don't need a diagnosis to have a mental disorder um i don't have a mental disorder which is why i don't have a diagnosis uh, i know in that last video i said that i couldn't find the uh, paperwork for my mental condition but that's because i lied because there was none and the reason why i lied is because i was distraught and sad um i hypersensitivity is not a mental disorder it's a mental condition so anyway, the reason why I bring up this person with Jade Animations and her aromanticism and asexuality is because you have people who like to deny asexuals existing and legitimate cases of disassociative identity disorder existing. With that, uh, I'm really happy that we can have more sort of LGBT representation 
in mainstream YouTube. And Jane Animations has gone through hell. She has gone through hell, man. It's it's bad. The fact that she's able to do all of this while still somehow staying mentally stable just you know props to you Jaden we 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 love you the uh the next group of women is a uh, is a triple threat I i'm hitting you with a, with a with a with a with a bang 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 1 2 3 Th this is a group of women who uh competed um at the Olympics uh 2021 uh, all three of them medaled, I believe, don't quote me on that, Adeline Gray, Tamira Stock, and Helen Morales, um, they are the three team captains of the USA Women's Freestyle, uh, wrestling team, and I look up to them because as someone who came from wrestling background, uh, seeing w women being represented in a sport that's been dominated by men and boys for the past God knows how long, it, it's really comforting to know that we're starting to catch up with other athletics. Because, um, I mean, we have, you know, gay and bisexual people you know, people in the sport, you know, there's the, there's the San Francisco gay games where, you know, where LGBT people compete in Olympic sporting events, um, and it's hosted by the Olympics, so, you know, we, we can have LGBT representation in wrestling, but we can't have women being represented in wrestling, that just doesn't seem on um, the fact that women are starting to get represented more and more in wrestling, it, it bring it really it, it hit it hits home. It hits home. Um, on the topic of women in combat sports, I also put uh, Amanda Nunez and uh, Paige slash Serena Knight. Um, so Amanda Nunez is a lesbian. Uh, mixed martial arts fighter. She is a featherweight, which is 145 pounds, women's featherweight, and she basically shut critics up who were saying, "Oh, oh, you're you're not as good as Ronda Rousey." First off, Ronda Rousey got the crap beat out of her by Holly Holmes because she doesn't know how to strike. Um, and then Amanda Nunez beat Holly Holmes. So, uh, shut up. Um, I think Amanda Nunez is the female Khabib Nurmagomedov. And, um, and once again, the whole, you know, representation of not just women in sports, but also LGBT representation in sports, it, it, it's really touching to me as someone who is a bi kid from a Republican hellhole. Paige slash Serena Knight. Uh, Paige is her uh, WWE name. Her um, real name, or yeah, her real name is a uh, Serena Knight. Um, uh, she is a woman from uh, England. Um, I don't know. I, I think there was something about her in the uh, in the news uh, a couple months ago. I'm not sure. It could I could be misconstruing something that happened with her and her former ex-husband and uh, another professional wrestler who had uh, passed away, but um, like I guess people were faking the fact that like Serena had uh, attempted or committed suicide or whatever. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Um, regardless, um, Serena Knight was the first woman besides Natalia Nightheart in the WWE. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, AJ Lee, uh, no relation to AJ Styles, um, who, you know, who, you know, actually knew how to wrestle and not go out and have a five-minute, you know, slapping and hair-pulling 
you know, kitty fight. And she basically launched the women's revolution in WWE. So it's a, hey, we're sick and tired of women being the potty break match. Uh, because of that, I, uh, I looked up to Serena a lot. And she was actually my favorite female professional wrestler, which is unfortunate that she had to retire early, so early in her career due to concussive syndrome. Finally, the uh, the last two women that I have on here are Natalie Portman and Carrie Fisher. Natalie Portman uh, played Padme Amidala, and Carrie Fisher played her mother, uh, Leia Organa. Not her mother, um, her daughter, sorry. Carrie Fisher played Padme Amidala's uh, daughter, uh, Princess Leia Organa, in the original trilogy in, um, in Star Wars. And those two characters showed that you could be strong and still be feminine. If you if you're a woman, you could be feminine and be strong. You don't have to be this dainty, you know, tea drinking whatever. You know, you 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 don't have to have a diplomatic solution to everything. You can do uh, aggressive negotiations uh, without being a uh, a sexist twit or an idiot or a doofus. Yeah, Carrie Fisher. She uh, her death really affected me because. I, I really liked her. Um, you know, 2016 was a dark year. Um, you, 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 you know, a lot of, you, you know, we, we, on top of losing Carrie Fisher, which was just a huge to the Star Wars community, we also lost David Bowie. Um, he's up there with Freddie Mercury now. Um, uh, we, we, we love you, Stardust. You know, Padme Amidala... The character of Padme Amidala, played by Natalie Portman, she kept Anakin Skywalker grounded. Um, she wasn't just a, a wife figure, a, a, a significant other. She was a she. She was sort of like a big sister in the Phantom Menace. And, and who later became a motherly figure by episode two and episode three. When you saw her on screen, you felt safe. It's like, oh great, oh thank God, Padme's safe. Oh, you know, and, and it's just that, <sighs> you know, and um, you know, and, and with Princess Leia and, and Carrie Fisher character in the original trilogy playing uh, Padme Amidala's uh, daughter um, she was a lot like Ahsoka this young wondrous adventurer you know and um, you know when you saw Princess Leia on screen you know you thought oh boy what's gonna happen it's about to go down and uh, the fact that we never got a a scene with Mark Hamill, uh, Harrison Ford, and um, Carrie Fisher together as Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and um, Princess Leia. Uh, you know, one final hurrah to the original trilogy. Uh, I will never forgive Kathleen Kennedy, Rian Johnson, and. J.J. Abrams for that. You guys robbed Star Wars and for your own gain. But with that, I still looked up to Carrie Fisher and I still look up to Padme Amidala. And I look up to many more women who I didn't put in that list because I, uh, or didn't mean that were in that list that I didn't mention because I didn't want this video to be, oh my god, ridiculously long. With that, um, I'm doing okay. I'm doing better. Everything's fine. I wanted to make this video because I like women and uh, I like all I like women and men and other you know people, non-binary people. Hello. Um, and 
I've been going through a rough patches of late. I'm 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 in a trough emotionally right now. You you have your yeah you, you have your hills and you have your valleys. I'm I'm in a valley, man. I am. I can't whistle right now because I'm dehydrated. I need to drink water. Um, you know what? You know I'll get through it. It'll be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Um. Uh, I'm going to end the video here. Um, my Twitter and Instagram links will be in the description. If there's a woman in your life that, you know, whether it's your sister, your mom, your girlfriend, your wife, your daughter, granddaughter, grandmother, aunt, whatever. If there's a woman in your life that, that or just a friend, uh, tell them that, tell them that you love them. We need a lot of positivity right now in the world, and uh, we, we, we need to get away from feeling sorry for ourselves and feeling sorry for other people, and I know I need to work on that because I am uh, I'm a, I'm a sensitive boy. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm physically strong, but I'm not emotionally, and I need to work on that. So I need to be more open and less, you know, ugh, ugh, eh. so um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that, and um, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I've been recording for for over forty minutes, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna end the video here, guys. Uh, Twitter, Instagram links will be in the description, like I said, uh, if you want to follow me. If you're new, please subscribe, um, and. Uh, I'll probably put a thing while I'm talking about the introduction in the uh, on the screen or whatever. So um, yeah, uh, I don't really have a clever outro to do. I just wanted to make this video, so um, I'm gonna go live my life. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye.